Hello and welcome to today's webinar from Imperial College London. My name is Catherine, I'm the International Student Recruitment Manager here at Imperial and today I'm going to be telling you a bit more what it's like to study and live uh, in London and study at Imperial. Today I'm joined by one of our student ambassadors, David. David, could you quickly tell us um, a little bit about yourself, what you're studying here at Imperial um, and where you actually were before you joined Imperial? Hello everyone, my name is David and I'm currently a master's student doing a master of research degree on biological sciences at Imperial College London. I also did my, oh, uh, sorry, I'm doing a postgraduate study at, at Imperial. Before this, I did my biology degree BSc at Imperial as well. And I'm Chinese, I came from China and I did my A-levels in Scotland. Uh, it's very nice to meet all of you today here. Thank you very much, David. Now, everyone, you may have noticed there is a question tab as part of this webinar. Please do use this throughout um, the session. Send in and email, uh, type in any questions you have for both myself and David. At the end of the session, we will be answering these questions. We will answer some of them live and then answer any we don't um, actually get to answer verbally um, through the chat function towards the end. So please do hang on the line um, for that. Um, Without further ado, we'll start going through um, the slides. So a bit about Imperial to start off with. Um, well, we are, um, as you can see, a very well ranked university. So no matter which university you're looking at, uh, which university rankings you're looking at, um, they're all assessed slightly differently, but we do consistently uh, rank in the top 10 and often the clock, top five uh, globally. So we, it is a very highly well regarded university. We also have a great um, history, so we are over 100 years old now. We have around um, 16,800 students in total and around 7,500 of those postgraduate. In UK terms, that's around a medium-sized university, really. And what we are is quite unique in the UK, being the only UK university solely focused on STEM subjects along with business, STEM uh, B, as we call them. We have had some great um, academics come through our doors, as you can see through our Fellows of the Royal Society, for example, and Nobel laureates as well. We're also a very international community here at Imperial, so um, we're very proud to be ranked uh, first in the UK in the Times Higher Education's most international university rankings this year, and that was fifth overall in the world as well. Around 50% of our students actually come from outside the UK, and that's actually from 130 different co countries, so very cosmopolitan, and very much um, reflecting the city in which um, we live. Uh, so here in London, very cosmopolitan um, city. I'm now just actually going to ask you a quick question in terms of who has actually been to London here. So you can um, answer this um, on your screen so you can just give us a bit of input so we know um, how many people um, have actually visited the city. So the, the map I showed you there um, may look more familiar to some of, them, some of you um, than others. Okay, just give you a couple of minutes to, um, well, just a minute or so to respond there, see how many people. So far, it's looking quite even. So about half of you um, seem to have visited London at some point and um, half of you have not. So, right, uh, one more second to let any answers come in there. Okay, I'll be closing it any second now. Okay, so let's see the results. So most of you actually haven't been to the city, um, but about half you have. So some of the pictures um, here on the map might look familiar to those of you who have visited the city or indeed maybe have seen films. These are quite famous sites. Um, so you see Imperial over on the left hand side of the screen around Hyde Park. Um, so that's right in the museum district. So we are very close to all the sort of um, tourist attractions you associate with being in uh, the capital. So we're not far, far from, all, um, from Buckingham Palace, uh, the River Thames, etc. So what does that mean? So we have our main uh, campus in South Kensington, um, as I said, right by the museum district, and that's where all our teaching tends to happen. We also have several medical campuses, so you, those of you who are looking at postgraduate programmes in our medicine faculty, and then a life sciences campus um, slightly outside of London in Silwood Park. Um, so this is a bit more of a close up of where um, these campuses are based. So the South Kensington campus is number six there on the right, so that's kind of um, right 
right in the heart of the city. And then our medical campuses are slightly further away. We have our newest campus, White City, number three there located. So that's a really exciting hub of um, research facilities that is being developed at the moment. So what does all this mean for you as a student um, living in London? London has so many resources for students, so it means that not only are you going to get all the benefits of um, being at a world-class university, but also being in a world-class city. There are actually 40 universities in London, so that means there's lots of extra facilities um, for you as a student to take advantage with, whether that's the museums, the galleries um, that are open to the general public, or the more specialist institutes that, that base themselves here in the city. So whether that's for engineering, uh, the Royal Geographical Society, for example, they're all on your doorstep for you to use along with their specialist libraries. They also have um, often things like guest lectures, so you can go and listen to your subject really come alive from leading experts. We're very proud here at Imperial to have a number of um, guest lectures come through, so we were lucky enough to have Stephen Hawking here, for example, last year. Also, London is a great place for thinking about your career prospects in terms of networking. So London as a city is home to all kinds of industries, so we have um, leading professionals, bodies, um, leading um, career specialists here in the city. So it's a great opportunity to really make the most of your time studying in the UK. So a bit more um, about um, the university now, so we are, as I said, a specialist um, STEM university, so solely focusing on science, technology, engineering and medicine. I'm just going to actually ask you now all to get involved again and just give me an idea of which um, of these faculties are you most interested in at the moment. Okay, I'll just give you a couple of uh, a minute or so to vote so we get an idea of who's interested in what. Okay, I see one, one, uh, one of the faculties is starting to take the lead, but see uh, if anyone else there. Okay, let's see the results. So, um, got a good mixture there, but engineering obviously has uh, taken quite a few people's interest, so we'll try and uh, make the most of that. Right. So moving on, so to the Faculty of Engineering. So at Imperial, um, we have a wide range of subjects within our specialism. So we actually have uh, nine different engineering departments where you can do a whole range of programs uh, from aeronautics, uh, materials, electronic engineering. Because we're a specialist institution, we can really back up our teaching with excellent facilities. So we have things like a hydrodynamics lab in our civil engineering department. We have a flight simulator for our aeronautics students. We actually have a chemical engineering plant our carbon capture plant here on campus for our students to get involved with. Moving on, we have um, the Faculty of Natural Sciences. So we have uh, chemistry, lots of programs within the life sciences, mathematics, physics, and also a Centre for Environmental Policy as well. The Faculty of Medicine has a number of specialist institutes um, attached to that. So places like the National Heart and Lung Institute, the, the School of Public Health, the Department of Surgery and Cancer. We then also have our, our business school, which is the newest addition to uh, Imperial, um, and that offers a range of programmes in finance and management. Um, some of these are for um, introductory courses, so people who don't have a business or a management background, um, scientists, engineers, um, historians can come and actually do a beginner's management course if it's a one-year specialist master's programme. There's also a similar programme in this in innovation entrepreneurship, so anyone who has those budding ideas wants to get them off the ground. We also do have a number of global institutes at Imperial that are open to our postgraduate students. Um, so these really kind of try to draw on the expertise within engineering, within natural sciences, within business and within medicine to look at trying to tackle some of the world's biggest issues. So areas such as climate change, for example, global health, um, science, um, security science and technology, for example. So it's really trying to foster those uh, relationship between the scientists, the engineers, the medics and the business world to really try and solve those big problems. We're also home to 12 um, PhD CDT um, postdoctoral training um, centres, which is actually more than any other UK university. And these give options of doing a four-year programme, which includes a one-year master's and an integrated PhD programme. Again, it's really drawing on those interdisciplinary expertise, so drawing everyone together uh, to work on these uh, problems in one place. 
In terms of what you can actually study with us, so there are um, a number of different qualifications just to kind of clarify. Um, so in terms of master's qualifications, um, there's the, the postgraduate certificate and postgraduate diploma. So these are normally um, shorter programs which can build towards a master's program. The Master of Science, the MSc, is the most common thing that you'll find here at Imperial, so all our scientific uh, degrees. This is a one-year program um, with teaching from October until May or June, and then normally three months to write up your project. So a master's in the UK is only one year. There is then also the Masters of Research, which again is a one-year programme, um, however there is um, a less prescribed route for this, so there are less set classes and you'll be more independently looking at your own research area. We also have an MBA program, Master of Business. There is also the Master of Education and the Master of Public Health as well. So very specialist one-year programs. In terms of research, um, so the doctoral programs, we have the PhD, most common in the um, engineering doctorate as well. These are normally three-year programs with normally around a six-month write-up. So again, they are shorter um, than you might find um, elsewhere in the world. Now a little bit about the um, application process. Um, so for all our master's programmes, you apply directly through the website. There is no need to actually contact um, any of our academics. You can apply based on your current um, academic background. Applications open um, from around the end of October, early November each year, and there's not actually a set deadline for our programmes. However, I would say it's always better to apply as early as possible. Our um, offers for places on our courses will be given on a rolling basis so if you're applying early on there are more opportunities and uh, more places on the course available if you leave it quite late there may only be one or two places available in terms of what we're looking for, it's the equivalent of what we would call a good um, degree in bachelor, your bachelor's degree. So kind of the equivalent of a 2.2, so that can be a GPA of about a 3.3. Um, we can also um, provide you with information of the equivalency from your particular uh, country as well. So we can supply information about that. But generally a high standard degree quite often will be within a, um, a specialist background depending on the programme. In terms of the application, you can choose up to two courses, um, with the exception of the business school for that, but you will normally choose your first choice um, will be predominantly the one that you'll be considered for. As part of the application, we will look back through your um, academic background, your transcripts, your degree certificates. You also write a personal statement, a um, statement about why you want to do the course, and this is your chance to really tell us about things that we can't maybe get straight away from your transcripts, for example, so to talk about relevant project work. You, you might have done relevant research, you might have done any work experience, anything that's relevant towards um, the degree that you're applying for, the sort of skills you're looking, we would be looking for in a candidate. This is your opportunity to really tell us about that in the personal statement. We then do also ask for two academic references. So this is um, recommended that it's commentary from um, an academic teaching you at the moment who can really tell us about your ability to take the, the subject to a much higher level. If you have been out of university for a while and you have been working in a relevant area, we will often accept a professional reference in place of one of these academic references. However, we do normally need at least one academic reference. In terms of applying for a PhD, the process is slightly different. So we either will advertise set uh, studentships, so you apply to this more like a uh, job application, and there'll be set criteria around that, and just need to have a look at on the website for that. Otherwise, you're encouraged to uh, contact a supervisor. So have a look at the department you're interested in, have a look at the research groups associated with that department, and in particular, the lecturers, um, the researchers in that area who might be willing to be your supervisor. Advisor. And then it's a question of, of basically dropping them an email, explaining your background um, and why you want to research in that area. And it's all really about making sure that you have a good match. So making sure there's a good match between the supervisor and the research you want to go into. Once you have the supervisor organised, then it's the same process of applying online. However, PhD start dates are um, do roll throughout the year, so there's not such a start, um, such a focus on a particular date as there is in the master's courses, where normally um, all programmes will begin in September, October time. So a little bit about um, how much does it cost? Well, um, the 
the tuition fees do vary between programmes and uh, also between the home EU fees and the international fees. So the best thing really to do is to have a look at the programmes you're interested in on our online prospectus and to have a look at more details of those. In terms of living costs, we say on average students spend around £1,200 per month. That's including all your kind of travel, personal expenses, food, um, accommodation and um, things like that. So it's good to start thinking about budgeting and planning well ahead. As um, a student, you are entitled to work during your studies. So um, obviously home EU students can work as much as they would like. Um, international students um, have a set number of hours they can work um, per week, so around 20 hours per week. However, we would say do consider how much you will be working academically during that time. So coming to do a one year master's program with us or a PhD is a very intensive course. So we, we really do recommend that you don't plan to work too much during your studies um, as, as your academic side of things will suffer um, if you are having to work too much. The good news is that there are some scholarships available, so do make sure you research into that. So we have a number of PhD scholarships available, for example, the President's uh, PhD scholarship scheme. There also may be scholarships available specifically for um, students from your country. So do obviously ask um, areas such as the British Council and our scholarships online search tool will highlight any we're aware of that may be applicable to you. So you have some larger areas such as achievement scholarships and then very niche ones such as Marshall, for example, as well. There may also be possible re uh, industry funding available so do research into that. Um, we do have some small scholarships available so anyone who is competing at high level for example we can offer support in things like going to competitions, uh, getting sports equipment. The, the, what a lot of students tend to find for postgraduate studies is that you might not be able to get that one golden ticket scholarship that kind of pays for everything. However if you actually start doing your research and having a look you can often find smaller pots of money that actually add up to really being able to support you during your studies. Once you apply to Imperial you will have access to what's called the Alternative Funding Guide and this is a great online search tool that can point out uh, where you might be able to find smaller pots of money um, that you can add up to really help you during your time studying with us. In terms of accommodation, so um, generally in the UK you'll find that students don't live on campus for postgraduate study. However, we at Imperial do offer two um, GradPad sites as they're known as. So GradPad is a student um, accommodation provider and we have two sites that are within good um, travel distance from our campuses. So this means that you have everything taken care of, all your kind of bills, uh, payments, um, you can stay in uh, single bedroom accommodation. So it's all kind of taken care of. If that's without a, a, a bit further out of your budget um, then a lot of postgraduate students will look to do private accommodation and obviously that will vary in London so any of you who have Vista City will know the kind of central zone one where our South Kensington campus is based is more expensive than if you travel a bit further out so it's a question of working out your own budget and doing your research. The good thing is that our student hub and our Imperial Home Solutions um, will actually offer you support in this so we can offer you guidance in kind of the areas that are good to um, actually live in and kind of good travel links for example and we have housing events as well that will offer um, support in looking for your accommodation. In terms of other sort of facilities and support to Imperial, so we have an excellent library that again is very focused um, due to our specialist um, nature as well, so you'll be able to find those kind of really niche books available and it's available, um, our library is available more or less 24 hours a day throughout the uh, throughout the year, just a few closures. We also um, you know, want to support our students um, through things like virtual learning environments, so you can get your lecture slides and everything afterwards. Also in the technical kind of side of things, more the um, sort of making side of things. We're really proud to have now opened a number of advanced tax space workshops. So that means that our students of any course at any time really can go and look out space in these workshops to do things like build prototypes. So if you have this budding idea that you really want to try um, trial out, we'll give you access to th things like 3D printers, um, laser cutters for example, and you can meet with other people um, like-minded who want to get involved in these kind of areas. Now we will be working you very hard at Imperial but that doesn't mean that it is all work and no play so we do offer a good number of um, social outlets for you to take part in lots of activities outside of the classroom as well. So we have a great sports centre here on the South Kensington campus, we have a swimming pool, gym, climbing wall etc. The Student Union is a really big part of student life in the UK and we are proud to offer um, 
the largest range of clubs and societies in the UK with over 350 different activities to get involved in. So whether that's something maybe connected to your um, studies, so we have things like the Robotics Society, um, the Racing Green Team for kind of um, building zero carbon emission cars, for example. So things that are completely um, irrelevant and just a chance to meet more people, do different things. We have a number of cultural societies. So if you're interested in maybe meeting people from home, but also from other uh, backgrounds as well, language groups, um, also things um, such as music, uh, drama societies, we have all sorts of things like that. And even if it's something you haven't tried before, you can do something um, completely new as well. There's even things like a tea society if you really want to find out what it's like to be um, really British. We also have some um, great music facilities on campus so our students can actually have access to the Royal College of Music just um, next door and we do have a number of um, orchestras on campus as well. Academically as well, we're really keen to make sure we support you as much as possible. So all our students will have things like tutors to support them in their academic work and really kind of make sure that they are getting the support they need to do as well as possible during their time with us. There are also a number of independent advice centres and counselling services that are completely outside of your academic department. So you can go and talk to people at any time. Also, um, our international students do have a dedicated team that are there to help them. Um, so our international student support team will um, run things like a welcome program when you first arrive specifically for international students. They'll be the ones offering you visa and immigration advice in the run up to, to, to arriving with us. Um, we also offer things like pre-sessional English programs as well that can give you more confidence in being able to communicate and write academically in English. Um, our international student support team also run a, a program throughout the year for you to meet other international students as well. So whether that's things like our uh, Cosmopolitan Cafe, where you can just go and have a cup of coffee and meet people from around the world, to doing uh, things like trips to other places like Brighton in the UK. We also, as um, a graduate student, we also will offer you um, particular um, training and skills development as part of the graduate school. So all our uh, graduate students, all our postgraduate students automatically become part of the graduate school. So this is an overarching support body open to all students doing masters and PhDs with us who offer um, bespoke uh, training programs that will really kind of help you not only make the most of your academic um, studies, so kind of research skills, for example, um, but also things like public speaking speaking, um, delivering um, programs in your area, for example, so that you, you really do leave us in the best possible um, position to go out and get that job that you uh, really want to get. And speaking of that, we also have a dedicated uh, career sports support service. Um, so they do things like run careers fairs throughout the, the um, throughout the year. They'll do things like um, CV and resume and interview skills workshops. Um, they really do offer you a chance to start meeting those future employers so you can start networking um, as soon as possible once you're here on campus. They also offer an excellent alumni mentoring service. So if you um, find out about alumni who've gone on to do things that you were really interested in, you can actually get in contact with them and ask advice um, on how they went about that. We also have a real drive for uh, Imperial here in terms of enterprise. So if you have those great ideas that you really want to kind of push further, um, as I mentioned, you have things like the uh, hack space to make prototypes, but maybe you've made something. What do you do? With it? How do you actually bring it to market? How do you go about launching your idea? Well, we now have the Imperial Enterprise Lab. So this is a dedicated um, support um, area whereby you can come and get advice and guidance about how you would do a marketing plan, for example, um, how would you, you would actually bring products to market and they run a number of competitions throughout the year um, so things like competing uh, for money and prizes in terms of the best um, advice and we've had some amazing projects come out of these over the last couple of years so really is a chance for you to kind of get your ideas as far as possible during your time with us. As a result, our students do go on to do a great number of things and we do very well in terms of um, student uh, graduation employability rates. So we've got some of the best employability rates and some of the best starting salaries. Our students do go on to do a very wide range of things. So yep, we do very well in the sciences um, and business, but they also go on to do a very um, wide range of um, activities. So we've got the heads of top companies, um, astronauts have come through our doors and we can even count some Oscar winners amongst our 
alumni. So a couple of our electrical engineering graduates actually set up um, a company that looks at special effects in films. And they actually won awards for special effects you might have seen in films uh, such as Black Swan and Born Identity. And they are even responsible for removing Lord Voldemort's nose in the Harry Potter films. So they do go on to do a very wide range of things um, after leaving with us. So if you are interested in finding out more, then there are lots of different ways. So we do have open days um, each year, either sort of um, online department specific ones. We run weekly campus tours. So if you do come over to London, you can come and have a look around um, our campus. We also do come out to visit you as well. So do have a look at our international pages and find out um, where we might be uh, visiting next. Um, you can obviously email us and contact us um, as well. Also to mention now, so we do have um, sort of a chance to come and taste what it's like to be a student with First at Imperial. We're launching a new summer school open to current undergraduate students on world challenges and innovation. So that's looking for science, engineer background or business background to look at, again, those kind of global challenges we were talking about. So it's a chance to find out more um, and study with us for a couple of weeks over the summer. Okay, thank you very much for listening. So that's um, the presentation for now. What we are going to do now is um, look at some of the questions you've been sending in. So do stay on um, the line. We will be um, answering a few of these questions um, live and then um, we will look to um, then answer the rest uh, through the sorry, via the chat function afterwards. Okay, I'm going to start off with a question that's actually been um, directed to our student, um, David, so he gets to hear, um, so you get to hear a little bit more about um, him as well. So just let's have a look through here. So David, um, what made you choose Imperial over the other places you applied to? Um, hello. Uh, the reason why I chose Imperial to study um, there is a lot of the different reasons. Firstly, I think the most importantly, Imperial is a very reputational university. Um, as we see before, uh, it is always like usually ranked top ranking in the in the UK, in the country, and world widely. But what behind the reputation itself is what actually very interests me. Um, Imperial as a university focused on engineering sciences it is give you give us a opportunity to go into the real research area give you an opportunity to see what is really what science is really going on around the world in that case you can do you can go into the lab where life uh, uh, where research is happening so you can go along with those real scientists and learn the things you really want to learn and become a real scientist I think that's what behind the reputation, but uh, I think that uh, I think in terms of good universities, they both have, they all have good reputations. But Imperial, as a, a university in London, is especially a very very interesting university. Compared with other London universities, Imperial is located in South Kensington, where things get very interesting, and you can have a campus in the city centre where you study, do your work, and do the research you want. But once you finish your uh, lab work and you finish your study work, you can go to the city center, into a very, very big city, into a metropolitan, where you can enjoy the rest of your life. So it's a really good opportunity to live in the city center and to be uh, really close to the uh, frontier of any science you would like to study. That's why I want to study at Imperial. Thank you very much, David. And you touched on this a little bit, but someone else has asked, uh, what's your favourite thing about living in London? Yeah. yeah so the... Okay, so the best thing I studied, uh, I really enjoy being in London is the uh, good opportunities you can get from this big city. It's not only you study and do study work day and night, but also you can have a lot of opportunities in terms of employment and other, uh, you just basically you can enjoy yourself in this big city. Uh, whenever you are a very academic person or you are a very uh, socialized person, you can both enjoy yourself in this big city. And I generally feel really comfortable living in London. Uh, Compared with other cities in this country, I would say London is a really, really um, exciting 
and a really, really uh, attractive city to live in. So that's one of the reasons I really enjoy it. And so you can both enjoy academic and your, your personal life. Great, thank you very much. Um, so another question um, we've had here that um, I'll look to answer. Um, so someone's asked, how long does it take to provide um, a decision after you submit an application? Unfortunately, there's no set answer for this, so it does depend on the different departments and how they actually look at the applications. You might find that some departments, particularly in areas like the business school, for example, will have application rounds, so do double check that, and therefore they will look to um, answer in kind of batches every sort of two months or so. Other departments might do a gathered field, so they might actually wait until they have the majority of what they see as, as applications come through. Normally, it does take a little bit of while to hear, it does take a little while to hear back, so put this in mind when you are kind of planning um, ahead that you might not hear back from us um, for, for a little while. On average, it's probably around 10 to 12 weeks. Um, so do kind of bear that in mind when you are um, looking to submit an application. It won't always be um, instantaneous um, at all, really. Um, someone else has asked, um, is there an entrance exam for any of the postgraduate programmes? Um, the answer is generally no. So we don't normally look for any additional um, testing like the GMAT or the GRE, apart from for a one or two of the business school programmes. So do have a look again at the um, individual programmes. But for the engineering, the other faculties, um, we don't generally look for any um, other, particular, um, uh, other particular exams. As I said, it was all based on your academic background, so a strong academic score, um, and then also the personal statement um, and uh, the references as well. So it's really based on what, what you've been doing in your undergraduate um, degree. Um, just to um, reiterate, as someone else has said, um, when do the applications actually open? They will be open towards the end of October, um, early November, so we don't actually have um, a set deadline um, in terms of when we open, um, but just who do keep an eye on the website. So all the applications are through the website. You'll see on our postgraduate study pages, there is lots of information about um, applying, but you do di apply directly through the website. Okay, well, I think um, that's all the questions we have to answer um, live at the moment. If you have submitted a question and we haven't covered it here um, live, what we will do is stay um, and uh, message them back um, through the chat function, so do stay online with us. Other than that, thank you very much um, for listening. This webinar will be available on the website as a recording, so you can go back and find out um, if you missed anything. And also you see the web, the, sorry, the email address there, international-recruitment at Imperial. Do feel free to send us any following, um, following questions via that email as well. But thank you very much for listening.